Well, we've been enjoying having uh, Luke and Murphy Jensen spend some time with us tonight. Of course, we see Luke every night. But, Luke, earlier we talked to Murphy about what happened to him, his medical crisis. Just kind of catch people up in case they missed that segment exactly what happened to him in October. Yeah, Murphy and I were playing at the Garden of the Gods Resort in Colorado Springs, Colorado, just an exhibition. We do it all the time. A few hundred people there, and he went down with a cardiac arrest, and we lost him four times. Fortunately, there were um, off-duty medical professionals there with a defibrillator on site. They were able to be there, save his life, and get him to a hospital. Well, Murphy has been with us tonight, and he's going to join us again now. It's good to see Murphy, who's actually up in Canada right now. And Murphy, you know, we've already touched on the medical crisis you went through, but take us through a little bit about your journey in terms of uh, the mental health and the addiction path and what you've done with all the knowledge you've gathered and with overcoming that. Well, so one thing I've learned is that, uh, you know, things like depression and anxiety are things that don't need a reason, you know, to, to have. And um, through my own recovery from substance use disorder and, and the path that I've led in seven years ago, uh, you know, I, I had a, a voice and my heart was saying I had more to offer this world than coaching superstars in, in the world of professional tennis or, or anything like that. And, and my playing days were definitely over. Um, and through blind faith and divine intervention, I, I was connected with my co-founder, Daniela Tudor of We Connect Health Management. She shares with me this whiteboarding exercise, and she wanted to leverage technology to uh, prevent relapse from drug and alcohol addiction and substance use disorder and provide the tools and the resources digitally through your phone. And uh, since COVID, you know, these problems, uh, mental health issues have increased 40 percent and SUD, uh, you know, and, and in the midst of this conversation, someone has died of accidental overdose. So this is something that's super personal to me. And, and if I were, had been an active addiction in today's world, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, my primary purpose, like Luke mentioned earlier, is to help others, period. End of story. And through We Connect since COVID, we've, we've uh, had 750,000 people, you know, attend our support group meetings that are embedded in the app from 30 different countries. We've got more than 1.4 million days of recovery that have visited and, and uh, exercised our platform. You know, it's a free app starting in September, and we serve uh, health plans, we serve institutions, we serve um, everybody, you know, and uh, it is so great that there are athletes and and we, we've got to destigmatize, you know, whether it's SUD, substance use disorder, or mental health issues, a lot of athletes are doing it, and it's, it's about time that there's a safe place to ask for help. There's a safe place to, you know, and that we should, uh, you know, had I had uh, prostate cancer or bone cancer, it would have been a different conversation. But mental health issues, you know, I'm only as sick as my secrets. And it's, for me, it was a disease of isolation and, and fear. And I was really afraid of being found out. And I was really afraid to ask for help. And it has really served me since uh, having the cardiac arrest, because I'm willing to let others help me. I'm willing to take the time out and allow myself the self-care needed to get better. And it's a, it's a long game for me. Murphy, the, the sports landscape is really kind of magnified significant athletes with uh, challenges with mental issues and mental health issues. And you were one that I didn't realize while well, we're holding the trophy in 93, and everybody always says, if I, if I can just get confidence, if I can just win this one more match or make more money winning, I can get this next level. But we're actually accomplished something extremely special. We win a French Open, we're holding the trophy, and I'm thinking, let's win Wimbledon. Let's become number one in the world. What were you thinking at that point? My hands were shaking in the locker room there at uh, Roland Garros, and I knew it was going to be big, bigger than just a couple of brothers winning a Grand Slam. And, you know, my insides did not match my outsides. On my outsides, you know, I never had to uh, justify, justify myself uh, that I was worthy as a tennis player, but was I worthy as a human being? Did I measure up? Was I enough? And I think that's the narrative that had been, you know, haunting me for a long, long time. 
I had all the tools to handle the pressures and the anxiety of what happens on that court, but I didn't have the tools to handle the anxiety and the pressures and the responsibility off the court. You know, you and I, and so many up to that point, were attached at the hip. And, uh, you know, and I found myself in a sea of people playing the U.S. Open, whether it's stadium court and, or, you know, that middle Saturday, and the whole world's looking at us. We are the Jensen Brothers rock and roll tennis, but my insides, I wanted to run and hide. And I self-medicated. And that, that, that was a solution until it came with consequences and became a major part of the problem. And I, and I really didn't like what I saw in the mirror, Luke. So, Murphy, if anyone's watching tonight and your story's touching something familiar in them, how do they discover more about We Connect? Well, number one, you know, go to WeConnectRecovery.com. Or number two, download the app, the free app. There are 10 support group meetings per day, every day, 365 days a year. Um, it's a way to create your routine, stay accountable to those routines, stay motivated uh, within, in, in an anonymous way. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, my mess has become my message. And in uh, the past 12 months, I mean, by the grace of God that I'm alive, uh, surviving the cardiac arrest. But I, I'm, I'm writing a book uh, that's going to tell my story and share my story. I, I've got a documentary film that's going to destigmatize its you know, we all know what the addiction story looks like, but what does the recovery story look like? This is, you know, my dream is that why would I keep, number one, why would I keep uh, hope a secret? And uh, at the end of the day, there's hope for the hopeless and help for those that couldn't help themselves. And I was that guy. And today I, I can walk this earth a free person and the sky's the limit. And even if an, an event like October 29th, happens to someone like me, I don't have to drink and use over it. And there are millions of people in recovery. I'm not unique. And my story isn't unique. But the biggest thing that needs to change is that we got to be got to be able to raise our hands, you know, and say, you know, I, I could use some help. And Murphy Jensen's number, you can DM me, you can call me, I am there. Um, it is, it's been the, uh, Greatest gift of my life. And I thought it was the worst thing that could have happened to me 22 years ago. And it's turned out to be the best thing. And I think I'm going to look back on the, the cardiac arrest to say, man, it really cracked me open in so many ways. I, I've got, uh, I, I hit my head pretty hard and I got my, my bell rung, but I'm now seeing through things through a whole new lens and a whole new perspective. And um, let's do this. You know, we're all in this together. It doesn't just affect Murphy Jensen, it affects the family, it affects our communities, it affects, you know, society in general. And, and prior to the, to the pandemic, the addiction epi epidemic was front page news for the past 10 years, and, and the COVID has just escalated those numbers. So there's never been a better time to, uh, to ask for help. Murphy, and even if you're not diagnosed, we can prevent this, and it's treatable. Murphy, what is your message to the family members? I mean, I was front and center because we're, we're having a career, everything we've ever dreamed of, you're having this trouble. I, I can't relate to that. I, I can't help. We, we did a lot of things and I did, tried my very best. And, and mom and dad and everybody, what is your advice to the, to the family members that are in this situation right now and looking for help, looking for answers to to help their sibling or their child? Well, you know, what? number one, We Connect Recovery has resources. And number two, um, nobody gets out of a, an alcoholic home without their own scars. And whether, you know, everybody's going to get affected in their own way. And I and there, there are programs like Al-Anon for the family and friends of those afflicted with alcoholism or drug addiction or SUD. And... You know, there's that help available, but once again, they have to have the willingness, no different than I had to have the willingness to maybe, you know, take some direction, you know, take some direction, receive that help, say, hey, white flag moment, I'm out of options, I'm out of ideas, my way isn't working, you know, what can you do? And so, you know, uh, 
there's right now there's never been uh, more information available. And that information is, you know, Luke, I wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for your love and support, period. And, 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 I, and I know that's super personal on a, on a broadcast like this, but that's, that's the truth. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. I couldn't understand that. And you couldn't understand what the heck is wrong with Murphy. And um, it wasn't until someone knocked on my hotel room uh, in Los Angeles and instead of the hotel manager calling the police, he called an interventionist. And, and that interventionist named Steve asked me, and he told me I had 24 hours. And I think you were involved in that, Luke. And um, the manager had called you, and you greenlit the interventionist. And that interventionist, the thing about that interventionist that was different than anybody else is that I, I connected with him because he says, I'm someone in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction. And he said, I had 24 hours and I was thinking to make a decision. And he said, if I, if I keep going, I have 24 hours and I won't be alive. Um, so this is life and death for me. And, and, it, and it's a, just the fact that I, I get the opportunity to share, share our platform and share what we're doing and share my experience because it's by hearing other people recover. It gave me hope that, hey, things could be different. And my prayer for the first 10 years was I need help that I can't give myself. And these men and women in recovery, you know, nursed me to sleep. They rocked me to sleep. They, you know, they, they said things like, Murphy, if no one's told you they love you today, I do. And uh, I'll never forget that tech on the, uh, in the detox unit at Culver City, you know, 22 years ago. All right, Murphy, gosh. I mean, <laughs> final word, Luke? No, I love you, man. I love you and family and forever. I can't thank Love you me. enough. Uh, thank you enough for your vulnerability. And I, I know that what you've said tonight is going out way beyond this conversation to a lot of people who need to hear that message. And uh, bless you, Murphy. Thanks a lot. I love this world and I love you, Tennis. <laughs> thank you, Sam. Thanks, Murphy.